Liz Wheeler is uh, with us, host of the Liz Wheeler Show. She uh, has uh, has found that there's a problem with the U.S. Navy on the mandates. Welcome, Liz. How are you? Glenn, thanks for having me. I'm good. You bet. So tell me what you uh, tell me what you have found with the Navy. Yeah, this is this is so egregious. As someone who comes from a military family and part of a military family, huge supporter of the U.S. military. But man, when there's wrongdoing, they have so much power over people's lives. It's terrible. I've obtained documents that show that at least at one command, a rather large command of the U.S. Navy, they are violating policy by preparing to issue blanket denials of requests for religious exemption. And this is, this is a violation in several ways, but the specific policy states that when someone asks for an accommodation, a religious accommodation, particularly as it pertains to immunization, that um, the command or the chain of command is required to evaluate this on a case-by-case basis. It needs to be looked at the chaplain first, then it moves up the chain of command. It, like I said, if it's related to immunization, it goes all the way up to the chief of naval personnel, who is a three-star uh, rear admiral in the Navy. And what I found is that there is a template, a document that is being used and being given to this command um, that is that is telling the CO, who is an O5, an officer, um, to issue these blanket denials. And on this template, there's no there's no place to fill in a request that has been approved. There's only a place to fill in a request that's been denied and not on a case-by-case basis. So these, these people who are serving and sacrificing, who have sworn to uphold the Constitution, they are not having their constitutional rights upheld by their own chain of command. So I'm, I'm looking at the documents that, that you have here. So somebody who is in the Navy says, I have a religious objection to this. They have to go to the chaplain. And then what happens Correct. to them? Correct. So the actual chain of command, as it relates just to immunizations, not other religious accommodations, it goes to the chaplain for endorsement. And then it goes to um, the commander of the command, which would be an O5. Then it goes to the first O6, which would be a captain level in the Navy, the first O6 in the chain of command. And then it skips over everyone else and goes directly to this three-star general, this chief of naval personnel. And what appears, and this is, this is, I should phrase this as a question, I, based on the clues that we see in these papers, one has to ask or one has to wonder why um, this exemption template was authored by the JAG officer, who is a lawyer, of a two-star general who is outside this very specific chain of command as mm. it relates to exemption requests for immunization. Because this, this individual... Um, has power over up to 50,000 naval sailors around the world. And if he's being this hostile towards people requesting religious exemptions, you have to wonder how high this goes and how widespread this is. So this should have gone to the, or come from, the attorney for the three-star, not the two-star, because the two-star has nothing to do with this this chain of command for uh, religious exemption. That's what it would appear, yes. It would appear that that that's certainly, I think, what Congress should uh, inquire if this is happening. Perhaps the things that we have the the absolute proof of what's happening is that the O six um, directed the O five, who's the commander at this um, at 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 Iwithy Quarry Station. That's the that's the name of the command. Directed the O five to issue this blanket denial. And the affidavits that you see in front of you, the affidavits are from some sailors who heard the commander. Um, say, I didn't want to issue these blanket commands, but I was forced to by my superior officer, the O6. That, we have proof that that has happened, and that is in direct violation of Navy policy. So what are the kinds of, of religious exemptions that, that are happening? Uh, are there any? And which, which kinds are acceptable? Because we're, we're hearing all kinds of things like... Uh, You know, uh, unless you are with, who is it, like Christian scientists, you're not going to be able to get this this uh, this waiver. Well, to my knowledge, and up until this moment, I don't believe the U.S. Navy has issued a single religious exemption or has issued a single religious exemption for the COVID-19 vaccine. I could be out of date. They might have sent some out this morning. I don't know. But up until my um, most recent knowledge, they have not issued a single exemption. And it, it's kind of an unspoken, uh, an open secret, if you will, in the Navy that these requests are going to be denied. But here's the thing. Here's where it gets constitutional. Here's where there's Supreme Court precedent. The Navy has the burden to show 
that if they're going to violate someone's sincerely held religious belief, that they do so, they violate it in the least restrictive way possible. As I said, this is the Supreme Court precedent. Well, we have documents in that Twitter thread that I showed that the previous CO of this command said that they fulfilled their mission. The Navy at this command fulfilled their mission 100 percent during the height of the pandemic, which means that zero percent of the service members were vaccinated. So it would be an awfully hard argument to make now that 99 percent of the service members are vaccinated at this command, that it would be necessary to achieve the mission to violate. I think there's 20 people total who are asking for these exemptions. So when you're when you compare the idea that they achieved what they needed to achieve with 100 or, or with zero percent vaccination versus this burden that the Navy has to prove that they are it's necessary to achieve their mission in order to violate mm-hmm. these people's rights. Um, it, it just it doesn't add up. It's, it's just hostility. They just have an agenda. They don't want it seems that they don't want to approve these, which is why they're neglecting their responsibility. So how many people do you think um, are actually going to stand and say, I'm I'm not going to take it? What percentage of Navy Marines are we looking at that are just going to refuse it? Do you think? I don't know. I don't know. And here's why. Because when you're in the military, you don't have the same freedom to just quit your job the way that you do in the private sector. If you come up against a roadblock like this that, you know, violates your conscience, you don't have that. You don't have that same freedom. And so the repercussions for people in the Navy who refuse a direct order, and this is a direct order from the DOD, this, these repercussions can be long lasting and devastating, not just to your naval career. You could lose your benefits. You could lose your retirement. I don't know how they plan to enforce this if people outright refuse, if their exemptions are, um, re- if their exemptions are also denied. But I mean, you could you could theoretically, under the legal structure of the military, face court martial. So I'm not sure how many people would be willing to face prison time for something like this, or if the Navy and the military would go to that extent. I'm trying to do what I can, you know, to be a voice for the voiceless because they because they don't have the same freedom that you have in the private sector. I'm trying to expose the wrongdoing because they really deserve. Navy policy itself to be followed and that their religious requests for accommodation to be evaluated um, with the sincerity that they submitted them. Uh, why do you think they're doing I mean, I could go down a conspiracy theory that uh, road that I, I don't think it would be hard to uh, accept for people. You know, they've been going after, you know, anybody that they think is a, is a radical in the service and the way they define radical is anybody who doesn't believe in the policies of the democratic party, uh, or who believes in the policies of Donald Trump or whatever. Uh, this is a way to get rid of 10% of the hardcore right, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. I mean, and this, this is the same with the vaccine mandate in the private sector for federal employees or federal contractors, right? I mean, what better administrative state than one that doesn't include anybody who thinks for themselves, any independent thinkers? And so, like I said, in the private sector, you have you have the um, autonomy or the agency to quit your job and leave that position. So what better way to eradicate anybody working for the federal government who is a conservative, who doesn't want this vaccine, who thinks for themselves, who, do- who knows that the Biden administration is rejecting science? That's certainly true at the federal government level. And it, it's also true at, at in the military as well. I mean, when the Biden administration took over the White House, when when he was inaugurated president, they immediately took action in the military and they implemented these extremist training briefings, which are essentially the same anti-racist woke garbage that paints conservatives as potential domestic terrorists and white men as these evil, evil patriarchal oppressors. And this is what they're this is what they're indoctrinating military members with. This is what Officers are required to teach to their subordinates. They're required to brainwash those under their command. And th- this is this is this hostility is seeping into the depths of the military. It is, of course, coming from the top down, from the commander in chief, the Biden administration, through this military brass. But what happens then is the people that end up being left in charge, the people who are willing to do this, are the ones who get promoted. And that's, I think, where you see this hostility mm-hmm. towards religion come in. In the case of the religious exemption for the vaccine, what's next, Liz? What's coming? Well, I, mean, I don't what- know. But if you look at that, if you look at that document, there's a very interesting. Um, it's called a chop sheet. It's a, it's essentially a correspondence tracker where officers yes. write advice for uh, their superiors. And when one of the officers was evaluating one of the arguments 
that a sailor made in favor of his religious exemption. He was citing, obviously, the fetal cell lines that were used in the testing of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. And on this chop sheet was just this gross hostility, this animus towards pro-lifers in general, making painting this, this sailor as an extremist. I think he called it an alarming narrative and his absurd argument. And it just seems that if you're conservative and you're Christian, you know, you believe in the sanctity of life, you believe in science. Um, there doesn't, there seems to be um, less of a place for you in the United States military than there used to be. All right. Where do we find all of this information? Can we go to the Liz Wheeler show.com? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I did a full episode on this, uh, breaking down all the documents. I did a, a massive Twitter thread so that everyone could have access to it. But the best place is really to go to Liz Wheeler show.com um, or go to Apple podcasts and you can, or Spotify or wherever you listen to your pods and, um, and and the, the it's the episode that calls for a congressional inquiry, episode 68? Correct. Okay, good. Correct, yes, good. yes, episode 68. And in Congress should. They have the duty to, of oversight, and they should use it. Have you heard from any of the, you know, usual players on the conservative side, the Ted Cruz's of the world, or have you heard from any of them? Yes, I've had multiple uh, members of Congress reach out to me. Multiple members of Congress have actually spoken publicly about this already, you know, whether it's on their social media accounts. Um, There's stuff happening behind the scenes, but I'm not the only one, of course, that are worried about this. And you wouldn't believe the amount of emails that I've been receiving from people in the military Uh, um, talking about other examples of similar similar discrimination against them since I published this story. Liz Wheeler, thank you so much. The Liz Wheeler show dot com is where you can find it. Thanks, Liz. We'll keep in touch with you.